Hello everybody, today I've got a pair of Magnani Balmoral Oxfords that are look a little bit beat up, but we're gonna get them cleaned up as well as talk about this brand a little bit. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordon. Here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. So let me show you what I found here, first of all. Uh, I've heard some people call this brand Mag Magnani or say it kind of odd, but I actually looked on YouTube and I found the owner, a little clip of the owner who now runs the company and it was like his grandfather's company, I believe. But anyway, he, I believe he called it Magnani. Uh, so if you can see the logo right there, is that upside down? If you can see the logo right there, right? And I got these for $10 with tax, $10.68. Uh, you know, they're a little bit like, hey, I've never used a shoe tree before in my life. And uh, these shoes tend to have like a long toe, elongated toe. But I think that may accentuate the problem of, you know, dragging these when you're hitting stairs or steps or something like that. Um, they're both that way. Uh, this one's not as bad. The sole wear is actually not, not bad at all. If you look, you know, it's not really worn into the, maybe just a little bit on the tips of the toes, but it's not even really worn into the stitches. Uh, the soles feel like very nice, dense leather, and they're still very solid, even in the center. And the heels are even in pretty good shape. Uh, they do have some nails in them. They're leather rubber combo heels. And like I said, they still got plenty of life left in them. And, uh, you know, it looks like stacked leather construction heels. So these things, uh, so far, these I think, I may have had Magnani's before. I think this is my first pair of Magnani's I've had. Uh, they're size 11. Um, so I'm going to take a closer look at the construction of them as well, and we'll talk about the company. So Magnani Company History. The company began in 1954 with just five employees. It uh, was located in Almansa, Spain, and the ground floor of a house. And like a lot of other company histories you found out about, you know, they, you know, basically through hard work, determination, apparently grew it from there. Uh, uh, Sebastian Blanco partnered with Antonio Garcia Pastor. The company's products were registered under a new brand, Blangar, B-L-A-N-G-A-R. Uh, in 1989, though, the third generation of the Blanco family began to take its place at the head of the company. Um, so, you know, it's still located there, I believe it says, in Almansa, Spain. And uh, Pascal's children, the third generation of the Blanco family, were ready to begin taking their places at the head of the family business. Miguel Blanco was the first of Pascal's six children to join the business. It was soon followed by his siblings. So, um, the shoes, though, tend to be what we call Blake-stitched. So if you don't know what Goodyear Welted is versus Blake Stitched, I do have a video here. I will link in the description and right here uh, in the video to a video that explains the difference between Goodyear Welted and Blake Stitched. Now, so let me kind of, kind of briefly show you what that means though. Um, I'll give you the short version. So first of all, what is Blake Stitched? Well, you can see here stitching around the perimeter of the shoe. And then if you look at the top side though, even if you peel back, if you peel back the upper there, first you see how tight that sole sits to the upper, but you will see no stitching on the top side. So what that means is these stitches are either cosmetic or it's Blake stitched. In this case, it is Blake stitched. Let me open up the shoe and show you. So if we loosen up the laces a little bit here, if you look down in the shoe there, if I try to get the light right. So if you look way down deep into the shoe there, can you see there is a line of stitching going all the way around the inside, goes underneath that footbed liner. That row of stitching connects to that row of stitching. That's Blake stitched, stitched from the inside to the outside of the shoe. It's pretty simple, so there is no welt. Unlike Goodyear welted here, which I go into much more detail, but long and short of it is here you see the, this is the insole, this is the outsole, you'll see a layer of cork in between. There is a rib, there is a rib called the gemming. Do you see this white piece? And it's got this lip on it right here. So that white piece in the lip is called the gemming. This is glued to the insole. And on this shoe, you can see the gemming. You can see it right there, rib and the gemming, okay? So the gemming, the uppers, and this piece of leather here called the welt are all stitched together. There's a stitch that goes through there. The outsole is then stitched to the welt. You can see here the outsole, you can see that stitch very clearly. The outsole is stitched to the welt. 
So the couple advantages to Goodyear Welted is, number one, you get that gap in between that's filled with cork. The cork gives you cushioning. Uh, you get a thicker overall, um, you know, between your foot and the uh, ground. Uh, you get a layer of cork that conforms, so the insole can conform to the shape of your foot. Uh, it also gives you insulation, you know, in cold areas, right? So the advantage to Blake Stitched is that you get a slimmer sole. It's a sleeker design. You don't have the welt, uh, you know, on top of that. And here's another advantage, and I didn't realize this. Um, this I read on Justin Fitzpatrick's The Shoe Snob blog. Because there's no welt, there's no welt joint. What you'll sometimes see on um, shoes, especially nowadays, is where the welt is joined together. There's a gap. <clears throat> Usually it's on the inside of the heel, but you see that split right there? The welt has to be joined someplace, and sometimes it can look a little bit ugly. So when you don't have a welt, you don't have a welt joint to worry about to look ugly. So it helps in quality control as well. It's a little simpler construction. The downside to me is you're going to feel the bumps uh, that you're stepping on more. You don't have that insulation. It's just not as comfortable. Um, I think it's much harder to create what I would call a 10,000 step shoe in Blake Stitch. My personal preference, I prefer Goodyear Welted. Now, as far as uh, some of the other construction features, I see full grain leather uppers. Um, don't judge the condition of the shoe. You, you know, obviously that's nothing to do with the maker. And you see, you know, it's got nice heel counters in it. The, the heels fit nice and close. That's another advantage to not having a 360 degree Goodyear welted shoe. The welt doesn't stick out. So 270 Goodyear welted and Blake stitch, you can get that heel tighter like that. The design is kind of neat. Now I believe this could be called a Balmoral. Um, if you look at the Gentleman's Gazette, they say that a Balmoral is a boot and a boot only. You'll see like some websites will list this entire style of shoe, you know, with a closed lacing system uh, as a Balmoral. My understanding though is a Balmoral is a type of Oxford, sh Oxford shoe or boot. Again, I could be wrong. You can disagree. Put in the comments below if you think I'm wrong. Where this line of uh, uh, the seam here, I should say, not the broken, but the seam runs parallel to the ground and the length of the shoe, right? So to me, this is a Balmoral Oxford shoe. Um, but the Balmoral originated as a boot with Prince Albert. And uh, um, so I guess that's originally where it started from. By the way, people used to wear boots with suits, uh, not actually shoes because roads mainly weren't paved. So kind of an interesting thing, but leather, like I said, seems pretty high quality to me. Uh, the stitching is very high quality. If you actually look around the perimeter there, can you see that? That's actually a row of double stitching. It's very tight, right? It's a row of double stitching there. Got the broguing here, very fine broguing. Got a line of uh, uh, holes captured on either side, right, by stitching. And kind of this neat pattern here in the back where it comes down. So that's kind of cool. And then you've got this back strap here that's stitched over to kind of give the reinforcement to the back. The medallion here is kind of interesting. And most of the Magnani shoes that I've seen, they all have this very pointed chiseled toe shape. And you can see it's kind of got a nice profile there. Um, but we're gonna have to get these back into shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the less laces the rest of the way out, um, and I'm going to condition them. And then while I'm conditioning them, you can see here, get it in the light, this toe cap is actually dented. You can see it there, right there. It's actually a nice dent in it. So I'm gonna maybe wet that down a little more and then stuff some newspaper or something up in there and try to get this to return back to shape, okay? So let's get started on the, uh, I guess first the cleanup. Here I can already see a little bit of a problem. Here's the shoe tree. I can feel the outside of the shoe tree. And because of this long toe shape, that shoe tree is not even filling the front. So let me see if I can do something about this. Let's see if I can fix it in this old uh grocery bag. I don't exactly, I don't exactly really know what I'm doing here. I think I'm trying to make a toe shape, you know? But I still got to be able to get a shoe tree in there, I think. Hey, that toe is really clean. I 
that ain't working. Okay, so here's what I've come up with. This is just some, this is actually vinyl, it's not even leather. I just have scraps of this laying around, I think from recovering something on a car. Um, and you can see I just cut a strip out. I tacked it on with these little brass plated wire nails, you know, that I have sitting around from, you know, doing heels and stuff. So far I've just tacked it on. See what I'm trying to accomplish there, you know. Um, and I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard as padding under it, hang on. So I just took this piece of cardboard, I cut it. You can see I cut it, I narrowed that side down as well as this side down so that when I fold it, see I get kind of a, I get kind of a hump. Uh, I think I need to just make it smaller overall. You get the idea, I think I still need to make it smaller, but I'll just, so now I think I have it where I want it. And it is pretty much on the top. too long still. So what I want to do, by the way, so when you insert a shoe tree, you see the wedge pushes in and pushes apart. I want this to go as far down in, so I'm not going to push it with the handle. I'm going to push it in with my fingers to get it as far forward as I can while it's in the narrow state because I need it to fill the front of the shoe, if that makes sense. There we go. Oh, 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 oh I think it needs a little more. I'm going to keep working on it. I think that... I think that pad is about there. I think I'm close though. Here, all I do is just shove uh, three more pieces of cardboard in there. Keep this together. Certainly better than nothing. I don't think it's perfect. But I think I get it, got it as good as I'm going to get it. I shoved the cardboard more up to the front, and I put a nail through it to try and hold it in place. It's not bad because this is coming down now. It kind of comes up. I'll watch. I was watching this area. I think that's going to work. Put it down a little more. Let it dry in place. Not perfect, but we'll find out. I want to keep going. So this shoe, the toe, is in much worse shape. I think this is what I want to work on first. Oops, you can see there it needs to be sanded down. It is pretty gouged, and you see the, the depth of the scratches. Uh, this one does not need to be sanded, I don't think. No, I don't know. This one does not, I don't think, needs to be sanded. That one just needs to be recolored. Uh, so I'm going to start with this one. I've got a little piece of 220 grit. This is full grain leather. Full grain leather is easier to repair than corrected grain. Corrected grain leather is covered in a, it's like a plasticky coating. And it's very difficult to repair because when you sand, when you gouge or sand it, you're gouging through that layer of uh, colored plastic. It doesn't accept dye very well. 
and um, you know it's just it's just hard to do. In other words, you're taking away the surface that you can't put back on. So it's one of the other nice things. But then the other side of the coin is corrected grain leather is much more um, resistant to scratching and scuffing, and also much more resistant to stains. Like if you drip food on a full grain leather shoe, light color especially, the oil will soak in and damage it or ruin it. And if you live in an area like I do where they have snow in the winters, where they salt the streets to melt the ice and snow, that is devastating on full grain leather. I've seen the leather bubble up on full grain leather shoes just from one exposure. I think that's enough. I'm going to now take a piece of 400. 400 grit is pretty smooth. And that gouging on the toe is pretty deep. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave that as is. And I'm gonna moisturize the shoes next. Conditioner I am using, this is Pure Polish, my favorite. I rave about this, I use it in a lot of my videos. Pure Polish Cleaner Conditioner. This stuff uh, has in it, you can see it there, orange oil, beeswax, coconut oil. Now, the way I'm gonna use it on these shoes, these shoes, if you look, the leather looks pretty clean. You know, I don't see a need to, you know, have a heavy duty cleaning on them, but I do wanna moisturize them. Um, and see what I can get off of the surface. So if you use this with your bare finger, it's gonna be acting more as a conditioner. When you use it with a soft absorbent cloth like this that I, did, that I got this from Andy at Pure Polish. I love showing this. So see, I loaded it up. It's darkened just because, you know, it wets the rag, but, so let me just start on the vamp here. Let me angle the camera down a little bit. I'm using very firm pressure. It's darker, it's pulling up some stuff. These shoes don't have much on them, honestly, right? But let me just go over there, keep going over the shoe with this, and I'm conditioning. But if there's impurities in the surface, it's gonna pull that up too. Yeah, that's not bad at all. These are pretty clean. Let me just keep going, and we'll see what we can pull up. And I wanna shove the rag, if I can, down in there to get conditioning uh, between the sole. And it's got this distinct this distinct orangey smell. It smells really good. Can you see? do not to do what I'm going to do next as a routine. I would just consider this like once in a blue moon kind of thing. Once every few years. I'm just going to condition, very lightly condition the interior. Now, you want to definitely not do this right before you wear shoes. Okay? You heavily condition the interior of the shoe and then go wear them. You're going to feel your foot slipping inside the, the shoe. It's going to be uncomfortable. Just very lightly conditioning, just get a little bit in there. And then these are probably gonna sit for weeks before they get warm, okay? There you go, I'm gonna do the other shoe off camera. I'm gonna add a little more with my finger here in the van and on the sides. Here's the other shoe. I didn't notice this until I was polishing it. It's another big gouger at the back. I'm just going to do the same thing. Sand it out. Got another 400. And I'm not going to be able to sand this all the way out. It's too deep. I don't want to sand it all the way out, even though it would look better because then I'm gonna remove so much leather, it's gonna weaken it. 
Yeah, it's a judgment call, you know? Man, something really gouged this. Now that they're conditioned, I'm gonna let those sit. I have found with the Pure Polish Cleaner Conditioner, uh, on the back on the directions, it does tell you to let it sit, I believe, I think it says. Um, apply uh, with fingertip or clean cloth uh, in one inch circles, buff using cotton cloth, um, air dry, one to two hours, uh, horse hair, brush to shine. I have found that it's very important to let this sit for an hour. The leather will feel tacky if you don't. Um, I might just let these sit overnight so that the, the, you know, the shoe trees can help straighten them out and we'll see how they look in the morning. It's been a couple hours. Uh, we ate dinner went and uh, went out. It's holiday time right now. We went and looked at Christmas lights, got some ice cream. But anyway, so it's been a couple, three hours. That dent is better. Still maybe a little concave. They're, the vamps aren't getting uncreased as much as I'd like. Um, I might put in some more shoe tree tension, but we'll see. Or maybe I just need to be more patient. But anyway, let's brush them off. Again, all that's been put on here is pure polish. There's no actual shoe polish yet. Oh, look at that, huh? And by the way, you'll know they're ready because they don't feel greasy. I really like the way the pure polish. Andy doesn't, the owner does not pay me, you know, to, to promote this stuff. But I really like, I prefer it even over Saphir. Um, what do you call this stuff? Uh, the Renovateur from Saphir that you know a lot of people use. I still prefer it over that. I believe, I feel like this stuff penetrates into the leather more, and I like the science behind it. Got a leather talk interview with Andy from Pure Polish if you want to learn more about it. I'll link it in the description. But look at that. There's no shoe polish on this. So, but next we got to take care of that. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you see this one more time. You could wear these just like this if it weren't for the scuffing. Nice. And for these, I think I think this burgundy. This burgundy isn't as isn't as burgundy as the name. You see what I'm saying? I think this is a good match. Uh, this is Pure Polish Products, and this is the burgundy cream polish. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use. Oops. For the toes, to recolor the toes, I'm gonna use a little bit of saphir, the cream polish in the black. set up. Okay, I think uh, they're ready to brush. starting to come around, isn't it? Yeah, 
And let's start the mirror shine, pure polish, high shine paste wax polish. And it is almost gone. This stuff, like, uh, um, you kind of want to, like, I'm trying to mush it into a finger shaped spot, but you'll kind of want to get a spot um, and use that same spot. Um, it kind of softens the spot. And so I'm getting a, quite a bit on my finger. And I'm kind of going front to back first. If you decide on a shoe like this, and you don't have a defined mirror cap, I'm sorry, a defined toe cap, you don't have a defined set spot to stop the mirror shine, you kind of have to decide where you're going to go back to. Um, in my opinion, I think most popular opinion is you don't want to extend it back past where the vamp creases because the mirror shine will crack off if it's over top of an area of the weather that flexes. So for the first couple coats, I can go back to that fold, then, you know, probably stop. I'll, I'll fade it out here at the back of medallion. But like I said, I know a little bit further the first coat or two. So now I'm gonna go side to side. really trying to at this point load up the shoe. That's set up. Okay, let's see if this one's set long enough. Let's see if it's ready. Ooh, maybe. You see that? It's already starting to get a mirror shine. Isn't that nice? I've said this before, but um, when you're doing a mirror shine, when you load the toe, like the way I always do it is load that toe cap up first as much as possible. And then now what I'm doing is I'm adding thin layers. Uh, but in that stage where you've loaded it up, uh, you know, the what I just did, if you feel like you're pushing around Vaseline, it feels like it's greasy, then you probably just need to let it sit and let that wax harden up a little bit. Or it could just be that you just, it could just be that you just purely globbed on too much, but like I said, if it feels like you're pushing around Vaseline, let it sit, let it wait. Now, conversely, if you're rubbing on it, putting water on it, and the streakiness just doesn't go away, it just stays streaky, um, then you just add a tiny, tiny bit of wax, and that usually will reactivate it. Water will also help solidify those previous layers. So can you see like along the side there, I'm trying to fill in all the pores. So I'm going to grab a little bit, just a little bit. Clouds over, that layer starts to fill in a little bit. One drop of water, smooth it down. You just do that over and over and over. So 
a water filling that broke hole. You want to let it sit, soak into the leather. And let that one set up. Here's a good example. So the other shoe that I just picked up, can you see how greasy it looks? And it feels greasy, feels like I'm just pushing around grease, Vaseline. Water doesn't help. That just needs to set up more. So I'm gonna let that set, whereas like on this side, it's starting to work. But even there, so. That helped there, but I'm just gonna have to let that sit and dry some more, okay? Now that this has had uh, another five, 10 minutes, let's see what happens now. I think I'm getting closer, but I still think that needs a few more minutes on that, that front part there. And there's one I've been having trouble with. It's been sitting another 10 minutes, and there we go. You see that? It's not pushing that greasy stuff around. It's actually almost too dry now. It's a great example of the other end of the spectrum. So see it's... That brings it back to life. You can see that the pores aren't filled in, but now, now I have something I can work with. Here's a good example of the wax getting too dry. I don't know if it shows up on video real well. Can you see the streaks kind of running that way? Now, I put a little dab of water on them. See how dull it is? The streaks don't go away, it really doesn't shine. So if I just take a little dab of wax, if I can get the, can't find my spot anymore. <laughs> I guess just get a little dab of wax, put it on there and it like reactivates the wax that's under there. Can you see that? Now that's what we wanted. Okay, I hope that helps. And one great uh, tip that I've kind of figured out on my own as well as uh, was reinforced by the king of mirror shines, Preston Soto of the Elegant Oxford, is to just let the shoes sit overnight, which I don't like to do because you know, I tend to be impatient and instant gratification. So these shoes have been sitting overnight and that just lets the wax, you know, really harden and solidify, you know, especially you start getting frustrated and still needs work here. Do you see in the middle of that medallion, you see there's some, try and get it right there. Some areas that are unfilled in here around the tip of the toe. Part of what I was doing too with the, the tips, when I was shining the heels, then I would stand the toe up on my lap and you know, the, the wax was still a bit soft and you know, it's kind of becoming counter, un, counterproductive and uh, you know, it's kind of hurting myself more than helping. So. Uh, that's what I'm trying to clean up the tip of that toe there. Uh, that area there needs a little more. So the whole area here needs a little more. So and you see now that it's completely hardened. I'm not getting any of that pushing that stuff around. You know, it's just going on really nicely now. So like I said, sometimes you just got to walk away from it, let it harden up, you know, come back with the next day. Keep working on it here. Don't necessarily need to show you the entire process. No black, it's a fair mirror gloss, find the chunk. Black polish is not going to turn this brown edge black, it's going to darken it. Let's see, the black polish is not dark enough to turn it black, just going to darken it. 
Look at that, that's called a beveled waist. You see that's rounded there? Very nice. I got a little bit on the toe there, the toe cap itself. And then just smooth it in. Let that set up while I do the other shoe. And I did the other shoe, so it's been just a couple minutes. Oh, isn't that so nice? It's a moment of truth. Remember that divot? Let's pull the shoe treat out. Remember that? And it's stayed. And it's not perfect, but man, I'll take it. Uh, the only evidence there is a little bit of wrinkling from, you know, where the leather was pushed in, but I'm okay with that, huh? So I took them to the uh, back patio where we have really good sunlight by the back porch. I was about to do the, and here they are all finished up. But I'm still not happy. I want to see if I can get more of that out. Do you see? I think it's like right there where the there's still some bowing, um, you know, in the soles. This one especially got that bump there. I mean, it's not terrible, but you see that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shoe trees out. This is just water. Take these extra large shoe trees. Those are way tight. Oh, yeah, those are tight. And I'm going to let those sit overnight. We're going to see what happens. Okay, guys, I want to show you where I'm at with this. There's no shoe tree in this shoe. Remember that dent? Uh, here's what it's supposed to look like. You can see that. Now, the shoe kind of has an angle, and then, it, you know, you see that angle on it. That's what it should look like. And this one, after a few days, it kind of came back a little bit. You see it right there? It has a little bit of a concave to it. I mean, I almost, it's better, but it's not all the way out. Now here, I can already see a little bit of a problem. Here's the shoe tree. I can feel the outside of the shoe tree. You see it there? So what I've done here is I took this again. I put two more pieces of cardboard in it. Um, and I was kind of checking where it is and it is in the right spot. Um, but, and then now what I'm doing is I'm taking the water here and the lace is loosened up. And I've already done dabbed it on two or three times. And I'm using my finger to wet that area of leather. I'm trying to wet it down pretty decently. Right. And I'm going to shove this in. And I'm going to do this one more time. See if I can't get this better. Okay. And I do want that water to soak in. Uh, but watch... Uh, I think I do have this in place to right. Watch that area when I shove the shoe tree in. Ready? I'm going to shove it in. Go. I think that's going to really help. Because now, it like gets the wrinkles out pretty much. You know, you see what I'm saying? And I'm hoping that when that dries, it's going to stay pushed out. So, I'm going to wet this down a little more. And then I'm going to let this sit for at least a day. And I'll show you what the result is. Okay, here they are the next day. Now there is a shoe tree in it, but this is just a regular shoe tree. So you can see, well, see it didn't move. This, you know, did not go under that area. So in other words, this has been unsupported for a day and it's pretty doggone good. I think really all you see now is a little bit of the wrinkling.
So I'm gonna touch that back up with a little bit of, um, uh, you know, the, the, the mirror shine polish. I, I left the shoe tree in it to try and straighten the vamps out. A little more of uh, the vamps aren't, didn't come out as nice as I would like them to. Eesh, man, I can't get the shoe tree out. Um, see what I did, by the way, on this one? I forgot about that. I sprayed the inside with water and, and then I put a couple strips of, uh, I think this is just cardboard, um, to try and push the vamp out a little bit. And eh, to be honest with you, it didn't really help. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to kind of be permanent stay in there. But they're much better than they were originally, don't you think? So let me get a little bit of a mirror shine on this, take it out in some good light, and show you the completed result. And here they are all finished up. They do have shoe trees in them, uh, but there's no padding under the vamps and that padding underneath that dent is taken out. Not too bad, huh? It is a pretty shoe. It does have a very nice profile to it. Not really uh, great for people with a wide forefoot, but it is pretty. And I did put just a little bit of neutral kiwi on the arch of the soles there. Get that logo to show up a little better there. And we'll to get in focus one. There is a little bit of a, um, there's a little bit, it's, it's not a fiddleback, but it's a little bit of a, you know, arch on that sole. It's not flat. It's kind of nice. And that's where the price was. Try to take it off with some acetone and that didn't really take it out because it's a permanent marker in the leather. And uh, so I had to sand it just a little bit to try to get it to be less visible. Heels are still in very good condition. A lot of life left in them. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. And if you already know the shape of some shoemaker's shoes just by the shape of the toe, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. God bless you guys. Thank you very much and have an amazing day. Hello everybody, today I've got a pair of Magnani. What the crap are these? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on Playlists.